is not your first time uh, in Brioni. How do you feel here and do you find the uh, ambience inspirational for your work? And... Yes, I do find, it, find the ambience very inspirational. Number one, I also keep remembering that my uncle, my mother's brother, her youngest brother, was in the Royal Navy in 1934 at the time of Mussolini. And in the Royal Navy came here in front of Fajana and Brioni and Male Brioni. And he was a sea cadet, he was 17, 18 years old. And he had to write a diary. I have his diary, yes. And I have the map he drew of Brioni and Male Brioni and Fajana, but it was spelt in Italian because that was where the basic map came. And then he had to add where his ship was for they had to keep the diary for the captains of the fleet. This was a little bit of the Mediterranean fleet that was going around the place trying to find out what's Mussolini up to. He was here, he got a bicycle. He bicycled around just like you see everybody bicycling. This was before Tito, of course, before before even the partisans. Želja, upornost, prijateljstvo. Tri važna elementa koja su ovdašnji kulturni prostor oplemenila nastupom jednog od najznačajnijih londonskih pozorišta. Almeida Teatar i njegova 60-očlana postava predstave Richard III četiri veka od smrti Vilima Šekspira obeležili su i na Brionima. Ambijent tvrđave minor i glumačka ekipa predvržena svetskim velikanima Vanessom Redgrave i Rayfom Fainsom verodostojno se oslikali eru vladavine najslavnijeg Šekspirovog negativca. Bilo je to ostvarenje dugogodišnjih sna njihovih domaćina iz Ulisis teatra koji već 16 godina na ovim ostrovima grade svoje vrsnu oazu kulture. Bili sam izvrstveni ovdje na Brijuni od Rade ovdje i Lenka. And uh, he'd been invited, he'd been asked me a few years and I'd never been able to come. The last year I said, okay, I'm coming as a guest to watch the King Lear. Ništa to nije slučajno. Uh, ne vjerujem da bi bilo ikako moguće u godinu dana dovesti našem teatru, koji na koncu i tako vidite i slabo si subvencionirano od države, dovesi tako jedan veliki teatar na gostovanje. I to dovesi teatar Almeida i sred Londona sa Richardom III, sa Ray Fainsom i Ovenesom Redgrave, koji su najpoznatiji glumci na svijetu trenutačno, dovesi ih u trenutku kad su oni završili svoju sezonu. Oni su već još pred četiri dana igrali zadnju predstavu u Almeidi. To znači da je moguće samo sa nekom nevjerojatnom voljom i željom i emocijom, kao što kažeš. To znači emocija koja dolazi najprej od nas, prema tim ljudima s kojima se družimo. Jer, znaš, družimo se, Lenka, ja s mnogim tim čuvenim glumcima ili režiserima ili producentima, ali nisu oni svi spremni da da uđe u ovakvu emotivnu ovaj, kako da kaže, misiju kao što su spremni Ray Fiennes i Vanessa Redgrave. And I was very moved and inspired by the atmosphere they create here with their young actors and their company. So I saw King Lear and I saw Antigone and I was very excited but we talked as actors do about maybe one day you can come here and do something and then And Lenka said, we need a Shakespeare for, to celebrate this 400th anniversary of Shakespeare's death. So, of course, I knew I was going to do Richard. So I said, well, I know of one Shakespeare production that's happening. And I told them. And then we discussed. And then I introduced them to Rupert Gould, our artistic director of the Armada and the director of our show. And they communicated. And Rupert had never been here, so he, he took it on trust that it would be good. I, 
I actually knew Lenkan uh, Ryder very, very little bit. My wife was in um, The Tempest that she directed with Vanessa Redgrave in London years ago, 10, 12 years ago. So I knew they were people who were warm and uh, would have a, a nice theatre community. And um, yeah, and also we'd, we'd played the show, uh, Rich the Third, for eight weeks, nine weeks in London. And that's, that's one thing, you know, it's just one. Uh, one way of doing it, and doing it in this bigger space, outdoors, the sky, it's a different different thing that happens to the actors. I feel like I'm coming home. I feel like I'm making propaganda. And I don't want to make propaganda. I hate propaganda. Um, I want to just tell the truth, and but find the truth. Um, but I have to say, because of Radha, because of Lenka, because of their ambience, of colleagues, for their, from their history, some of which history I've shared too, um, from the war years, from after. I feel because of these and them, and because this is a very ancient part of civilization, very ancient. The Greeks had their empire in these areas long before the Romans. I, I feel very peaceful, very peaceful. I'm working with people I admire, I respect, and um, I just wish I could spend more days. I'm so grateful. Gratitude is what I feel more than anything else. Pa bilo je vrlo za mene emotivno da vidim juče jel da taj brod koji pristaje na veliki brijun i iz koga izlazi ono 60 ljudi koji su upravo doputovali iz Engleske. A, jer mislim da o, to jeste na neki način ispunjenje i nekog sna. Mi kada smo 2001 osnivali Ulysses Teatar i kada smo radili našu prvu predstavu koja je isto Šekspir, jel da, Šekspir nas je nekako poveo i vodi sve ove godine. Živjeli smo u Londonu i neka osnovna ideja je bila da eto, ovde radimo jedan teatar koji spaja ljude Hteli smo nekako i naše živote koji su podeljeni između ovog prostora ovde i nekih novih života koje smo imali u Engleskoj da spojimo i da spajamo umetnike. I od prve godine smo imali umetnike sa raznih strana sveta iz regiona ali nismo ovako imali baš jednu kompletnu ovaj kompaniju. Shakespeare's language is so muscular and strong and uh, we have a tendency to, when we perform it in theaters to become very rhetorical and uh, self-conscious maybe. And I think it's at its best. Like Vanessa Redgrave when she came in yesterday to the the theater and had this huge rock face and the wind was blowing and she found something more elemental in her performing style. And, um, uh, you know, I think, I think that is there. And then I think also, you know, maybe, maybe we're romantic about the Adriatic and the Mediterranean and these islands as sort of the birth of dramatic culture, I suppose, from the Greek tragedies through to Roman drama. And so you feel maybe that there's sort of essential history in the, in the rocks. Um, and then also the fact that the the the, the theatre is, um, you know, a former 19th century military institution, and the play has danger and ends with warfare. Uh, that gives it an extra texture as well. For every production that is staged dramatically with music and lights done in an evening. Um, the actual ambience, as you say, 
that's of enormous importance. It's the human factor that is the decisive factor. It's the prime force, the human factor. And if that meets an ambiance that is rather special, then you get an extraordinary result. I was just thinking before I came to meet you that we had very few hours to translate the production from an indoor production in a small London theater, small indoor theater, entire production based there, and we had a very few hours to translate that, or I think the word is in English is transmogrify, which sounds a little bit mysterious and mystical, but <laughs> anyway, um, this production to be perfect for the audience here on Mali Brun in this fortress. Very few hours. But Radha and Lenka and the Ulysses people all together create the kind of atmosphere of trust, and it's a physical atmosphere of trust. That's one prime factor. The stage management, a few people of the Ulysses, our stage management of the English company, Almeida, few people, very few people. Within these few hours, the work that was done on the stage management side was huge in a few hours. The lights and position, the lighting program, the sound program, and the director with us actors, very few hours. But we didn't feel frightened, we weren't panicked, because the Ulysses people create an atmosphere of complete trust. Now that, to me, my thinking, I used to love going to the circus and watching these trapeze artists, and you have to have enormous trust and enormous skill, the combination of the two. Trust and skill. Well, we felt the same. We have our skill, but they gave us the trust and their skills. Most of the heavy lifting and the sponsorship was, was all Rade and Lenka. So thanks to them, we are here. And I know that uh, so it, certain people carry great energies um, and believe in theatre and the vitality and the importance of theatre, the transformative power of theatre at its best. And that's Rade and Lenka and they both carry this uncomplicated idealism and it's, it's a physical reality here, I believe. And so I just think that it's, maybe it's, for us, it's a chance to be close to that sort of energy um, and idealism. And this space in this odd fortress, it's fantastic space. And, for, and what we've experienced in Richard III is how you know we've changed our production completely to to suit this environment, but it's been um, properly exciting and challenging, and, and so that's it came about because of because of friendship. I know Rod and Link for many years, and the Ulysses people and artists as well. But the whole company of actors and stage management from the Almeida. And the director, Rupert Gould, took it on trust from Rafe Fines and me. And one visit here, very few hours again, a few months ago, that this would be special. And it was. It was. There's no doubt about it. Okay.
curse my noble father laid on thee when thou didst crown his warlike brows with paper and with thy scorns drew rivers from his eyes and then to dry them gave the duke a cloth steeped in the faultless blood of pretty Rutland. <laughs> his curses then from bitterness of soul denounced against thee are all fallen upon thee and God not we have played thy bloody deed. So justice God. Almeida is a wonderful theater and while we lived there, Često sam išla i tako sanjarila kako bi bilo divno. I eto, to se sada ispunjava i mislim da je naročito važno da je to baš ove godine kada se desio Brexit i ove godine kada su nama značajno, vrlo značajno uskraćena sredstva potpuno za međunarodnu suradnju. a i razne druge stvari, da je ipak neka volja i želja za suradnjom pobjedila i s naše strane i od strane Almeide, jer trebalo je stvarno potegnuti da se ovo desi. Well, it's, I mean, this summer has been so strange in England that we started rehearsing it one way and then, you know, England began to fall apart. We had Brexit, we left Europe, we had uh, almost like civil war in England for all, as much in my lifetime as I can remember. Um, and then, of course, a summer of violence in communities as well in France. And uh, so, so maybe it changed. I think when we started, I was interested in... Um, England's relationship to its own history and that England maybe prides itself on being the birthplace of Parliament and democracy and uh, that we've never had a revolution, sort of we're a civilised country, well-mannered, we have the royal family, we have tea, we have, we gave the world football and sports and all these things. But, but England actually is a very uh, warlike uh, violent country in its bones and Shakespeare was writing about that time and you know we see it obviously through all the terrible slavery project in England but also going back to the English Civil War and then the Wars of the Roses that these plays are about were you know were our own I guess like in the former Yugoslavia you know they're, they're our own great civil conflict huge battles like massive you know tens of thousands of people in a very small underpopulated country at that point during the Wars of the Roses terrible atrocities um, people changing sides all the time and I sort of wanted to reconnect maybe our slightly um, safe and affectionate view of history and Henry VIII and Elizabeth I with the real um, danger of those times for Shakespeare but also earlier. It's a question that was always going to be asked. Um, I think the genius of Shakespeare is that he is one of the great humanitarians. He, his ability to see all the complicated layers in how human beings operate as families, um, as lovers, as, as in politics. And one of the great, I think, one of the great sort of areas uh, that Shakespeare is brilliant at observing is the issue of power and politics and power and the, and the need of people to control and dominate. So a number of his plays look at what it is to be, have power, whether it's Julius Caesar or Macbeth or Richard II or Henry IV even. But I, and Richard III is possibly his earliest examination of a tyrant. Um, and I think that, you know, it, we know in our lifetime on this planet there have been extreme leaders who have taken power in extreme ways and caused all kinds of destruction and chaos. Uh, it's funny because I think we came from a time recently where dangerous leadership 
has been less of an issue than ideology. You know, if we think of, uh, if you go back to a time of Ceausescu or Gaddafi or, you know, whatever, Hitler, Stalin, you know, these were dangerous, dangerous leaders. But in the last, it feels like in the last 10, 15 years, you know, the opposition of cultures and nations has been not led by individuals. And yes, we've had, you know, Bush and Bin Laden and Putin, these big figures, but really it's been about ideology. And now I think we're returning to an awareness that individuals with psychopathic mindsets are extremely dangerous. And so, so maybe the play is, maybe the production now feels, and what Ray Fiennes is doing, feels more about that. I think that's where it's relevant, is that those people haven't gone away and they exist in varying degrees in different countries. Those, I mean, you know, I think that when you read about aspects of some governments in Africa, recent governments in dictatorships in South America, um, you know, I think extreme dictatorial power exists. Not, they're not necessarily Richard, because what Richard is also, although he's... I'm being a little bit over-intellectual about it, because also what Shakespeare is brilliant at doing is he makes it he understands the, the theatrical dynamic. And that, that is, on, on its own, he creates this character who talks to the audience and says what he's going to do. And thus, I clothe my naked villainy with old odd ends stolen out of holy writ and seem a saint when most I play the devil. But yet, I know not how to get the crown, for many lives stand between me and home. And I, like one lost in a thorny wood that rends the thorns and is rent with the thorns, seeking a way and straying from the way, not knowing how to find the open air, yet toiling desperately to find it out, torment myself to catch the English crown. And from that torment, I will free myself or hew my way out with a bloody axe. I can't think of any other play before that where such a strong figure has this connection with an audience. So I, I would argue, uh, maybe a bit out of ignorance, that I think Shakespeare is also, not, is only, not only is he looking at the figure, the figure of the tyrant, which is always fascinating. We always, when, when you're a child and you're told a story and there's the evil king, of course, children are, were all fascinated. I mean, I, I, I played Voldemort, and of course, everyone is fascinated by Voldemort. <laughs> um, you know, the, 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 whoever would play Voldemort, this, the, this extreme figure of evil is always compelling at the most basic mythical level. The, 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 the force of darkness is always interesting all the time. So, in Shakespeare's time and in our time. But I think what makes Richard unique, uh, I, I think, is that it's pop possibly one of the first plays in the English language where there's this very strong theatrical dynamic of a figure talking to the audience before Hamlet, before Macbeth. It's earlier than that. And it's full of humour and it's, uh, it's, it's, an, it's a mode of theatre in its own, is the, the, the figure coming forward and looking you in the eye and talking to the audience. Um, and, and that's continues now in modern um, playwriting and uh, and uh, it's a so that's where it's relevant it's still theatrically valid I, I, I experience it every night that, that the relevance at the most simple level is that a guy comes forward and says I'm really bad I'm deformed I, I, I hate the world and I'm going to fuck it all up <laughs> um, and the audience on, on the most basic level that's theatrically pleasurable just because you're being told this dark stuff <laughs> and, uh, and and think that and if as long as it's theatrically valid to the audience today it'll have a relevance Za oba dvih tih klumaca i umetnika je jedna stvar koja ih povezuje, a to je da nisu oni samo glumci, 
nego su nešto više. Nešto više. Oni su prije svega neki fantastični ljudi, emotivni ljudi, koji je boli nepravda u svijetu, koji boli činjenica da smo svjedoci užasnih ratova i situacije da neka mala djeca i nevini ljudi ginu, da toliko ljudi, tisuće i tisuće ljudi bježe pred ratom, da spašavaju goli život, da se politike poigravaju s njima, a da su oni zapravo isti ljudi kao mi. E to mogu samo izuzetni ljudi raditi tu vrst misije i činiti od svoje umjetnosti akciju i misiju. I'm very aware of the fact that so many people have suffered in this whole vast area, beyond the area of Croatia itself, through the whole of the Balkans, for over 105 years. I was, um, I said goodbye to a man, he was an Albanian Kosovar, um, I said goodbye to him in a Red Cross tent when he had escaped on the shoulders of his family and his sons and grandsons. He was 105 years old. He was a survivor of all the wars, five wars. And I sat by his bedside in a Norwegian Red Cross tent. I'd spent the night before with his family in the refugee tent on the hillside. And I said goodbye to him. And I'm so grateful to the spirits which were alive, and in one sense they still alive if we remember them and remember our history. And if we if we connect, if we connect with each other, and the one place that's safe to connect. Safe is through the theatre, Shakespeare, through the Greek theatre, Euripides, the great Euripides, of course, and through, through other playwrights, but these are the two I think of especially. If we connect with each other, then we have a role in... You remember that Ariadne gave Theseus in the old myth, Ariadne gave Theseus a little red ball of silk. And when he was going into the labyrinth to find the Minotaur, it's much. And she said, drop this as you go, and then you'll be able to find your way back. This is what we in the theater can do. Join with other people who are trying to find the way back which actually is another way of saying, find the way forward.